What color is your dog? What kind of question is that? I'm not talking about the color of his fur. I'm asking you, what color is his behavior? Ooh, that's <laughs> that's a really interesting. It's the color of his behavior. Interesting, right? Hmm. All right. Well, the guy uh, who first answered that question is celebrity dog trainer Joel Silverman. Uh, I've known Joel a long, long time, and he's here to talk about the color of your dog's behavior. Joel, Hi, Joel. nice to have you here. How, How are, are you? you? Thanks. Thanks for having me. What does that mean? Um, well, you know, I I like training dogs based on personality, and. Um, I've been training dogs for a long time, and I've seen a lot of different types of people work with dogs. And you know, there are some people that will say, that are kind of like more hardcore, and they're into just you know a lot of a lot of compulsion and correcting dogs, not a lot of treats. And you got other people on the other side that are into more of the kumbaya world of dog training. It's <laughs> like this, you know, everything is well, look at treats and clickers and cookies and kisses, and everything is great. And it's like, well, what I always try to explain to people, it's like, well, those people are not wrong. And then the other people in certain situations it might not be wrong either. So my style is is that um, we break it into right in colors. You. Your dog Mistake is one of five people. colors. And so the way we do it is you look at it almost like a color spectrum. It would be like red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And the closer your dog is in the center of the spectrum, the easier your dog is to train. So a yellow dog would be, you know, a mellow yellow, and some dogs are naturally yellow. Some dogs are yellow because they be, they were um, they were a certain color and they be, they moved kind of towards that center how of the do, spectrum. How do how do dogs get to be a color? Are they okay. born a color? Or are they basically what happens? is Your dog would be yellow, and then so we have a yellow dog in the middle. Then we have an orange dog. Orange dog is going to be a high strung dog, not really really super high strung, but a very very reactive dog. That's going to be an orange dog. And then we move a little further out, and we have a red dog. Red dog is off the wall, front feet are not on the ground, barking, lunging, just going crazy. It's like an orange dog on. Is this a okay. formula you came up with? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And so, <laughs> and then on the other side, we have a green dog, which is going to be timid. They're going to be apprehensive. Uh -huh. And we have a blue dog, which is really afraid of everything. You walk into a house, she runs out of her bed. So now we have our blue, our green, which are our cooler color dogs, our yellow, mellow yellow, orange, and red, which are our warmer color dogs. My whole philosophy is you would never train a cooler color dog like a warmer color dog. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you move, the really? reward, everything you do is like night and day. And I always go back to, you know, like in school, if you had a little girl that was, you know, timid, somewhat timid, and you've got like me, you know, who was just the boisterous, you know, you know jerk uh, in third grade, <laughs> you know, whatever. Well. How the teacher dealt with me and how he, you know he deals with her. Well, that her. makes sense. Yeah. Exactly, and right. it's the same thing. It's no different. And you can destroy this. The, if you were to correct that girl verbally, correct the girl the same way you corrected me, you would destroy her. You know, mm -hmm. it'd be like oh, she can't deal with that. I could because, and it's the same thing as working with the dogs. It's not, and it's just, it's not a physical thing, but it's just a mental thing. And so, um, and that's the bottom line. So you know, and that's kind of how we do it. What's the number one thing that your clients and the the dogs that you train like? What's the easiest problem to fix, and what's the hardest problem to fix? Um, the easy, <laughs> the easiest problem to fix basically is um, anything that is done in a controlled environment. When we talk about a controlled environment, that means. If the dog is facing us, we're training our dog to sit or lie down or whatever, and let's say he's not sitting right away. Well, we're using treats to train the behavior, so we're going to shape it with the treat. We'll use the treat to train the behavior. We'll eventually fade the food out. But if we always have that treat or we always have that motivation with the dog, um, it's always going to be easier. When you're dealing in an uncontrolled environment, uncontrolled environment simply means we're not training the dog. Jack Russell on the back of a couch barking out the window at other dogs. You're not training the dog. Okay, he's, he's on his own doing that. Um, you're walking your dog and all of a sudden he lunges at another dog aggressively. Um, those are uncontrolled. You're not training the dog. And in those situations, it's always going to be more challenging because letting your dog play out those actions is reinforcing to your dog. And that's Bad why. Bad behaviors. But right. that's why we created this color scheme because what we want to teach people is the, the reactive dogs, which are going to be the orange and red dogs, they need to be interrupted. We cannot let them complete those actions. And there's trainers out there that we well, thought that the kumbaya trainers, and it's going to tick a lot of people off. I don't, <laughs> don't care. Um, but you know, they just want to basically think that everything is going to be you know, hunky dory, and we'll just ignore those bad behaviors. Just love the dog. But if yeah. you let the dog complete those actions, that in itself is a reinforcing dog. All right. So I've heard because I've I've had several dogs in my life, and they and the trainers have always said to me, "I'm here to train you, not the dog." That's true. Is that true? That is absolutely true. That is 100 percent true. Well, because because the bottom. Well, first of all, there are a lot of smart dogs that basically will take people to the cleaners. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, it's like, and they do, you're in trouble. You know right. what I mean? You know, that's number one. Uh, but number two is the fact that there are things that you do, and I teach these dog training certification courses I launched three years ago, and I fly all the United States to humane societies and dog daycare businesses, and I'm on the road, you know, a third of the, a third of the year probably. And I've learned a lot. 
I've learned a lot about people and what people do. And the mistakes that people make, some of these mistakes that people make, the owners make un unintentionally is, um, a good example is, um, when you tell your dog to stay, I would tell, my own, tell the owners, I, said, I was like, tell your dog to stay, put your, put your right hand up, just keep your hand up there, step back 30 feet, and walk into, the, you know, walk into, you know, and if you're gonna reward your dog, you know, that's great, you reward your dog. But if you walk in and all of a sudden you reach into your treat bag or reach in and mess with it, some treats halfway to the dog, and the dog's not trained to stay, what's the dog gonna do? He's gonna break. Run yeah. to you. And that's, so that's little things like that. But believe it or not, there's a hundred different little things that owners do that if you don't tell them what to do, they're gonna be like, you know, because, and I try to teach people to go through my course, I'm going, most people that go through my course are really, really great, mm -hmm. you know, about being just naturally good about being around dogs. I said, well, remember, America's not like you. Most people are not like you. Mm -hmm. Most people need that time, and most people need to be able to so that repetition and say, hey, make sure you keep your right hand in the air. Make sure when you walk, step back, you step back. And I wish I could do this because you would laugh really hysterically. But when people <laughs> step back, you know, a lot of people step back and they're hunched over and their little feet go a little. And I'm like, is that the way you normally walk? <laughs> you just look, I'm like, you look so weird. You know? And I'm like, but that dog sees you looking like that. Yeah. I said, just take long strides, step back, you know, the way you normally, just try to, you know, move the way you naturally move. You so, know? So. so how do people get a hold of you if they, I mean, You've do you still? You've got lots of books here. You I know, know you have books, yeah. but do you have lots of, uh, I mean, do, do you still take private clients? We do, we do private clients, yeah. We uh, come down here to, to uh, we're here in Southern California, um, at per, you know, periodically in, in Reno and things like that. But right now what we do is we have these dog trainer certification courses. And so we fly all, all around the United States and we certify people to be dog trainers. And a lot of people that sign up for the courses are people that are retired, they're 55, 60 year old. Um, a lot of, a lot of, most people go through my course are probably women. Yeah. Um, uh, but some of the women that have gone through the course 50, 60 years old have done incredible. It's a four day hands on course and they just, they might want to be a volunteer to Humane Society. They might want to just train some dogs on the side or whatever. So that's kind of what we do is we sort of website. People. Yeah, uh, joelsilverman.net. Oh, that's right. easy. It's real Joel, simple. Yep. thank you for coming. Joel, thank thank you, so you for much. having me. Next Appreciate time it. you're here, well, let's talk killer whales, because you used to train killer yes, whales. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Love to, have, love, love to come back. And I, also want, and I also want you to bring a dog, so we can, can see we do this can behavior we do next you time. you guys have a dog? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was going to We have but, dogs, but not here. But producer Amy has a dog. We'll bring a dog. Okay, Joel. Thanks so much for having me. We'll be right back.